Okay, this film tries to do something different from the original Nutcracker story, and I really appreciate that. It would have been easy and creatively lazy to just do a direct adaptation. So I applaud the filmmakers for thinking outside the box when it came to this story. And as far as the actors go, this film had good to great actors. Some noble ones would be Eva Gabor and Christopher Lee in some of the roles. It took me a moment to realize that Christopher Lee did multiple roles at first, and he was good in all of them. Also, some of the songs in the film were really good, especially when they were sung by Christopher Lee, which reminds me, Christopher Lee is the real MVP of this film. Between singing and doing voices for multiple characters, this made the film bearable to sit through. That said, he wasn't perfect. I don't think he differentiated his voice enough between each role. He sounded like Christopher Lee in every one. Another thing I liked was some of the effects and action scenes are really good. There is a really good use of 2D animation and practical effects in here. And when you see them, they really stand out. It did make me wonder though, would this film look better if it were in 2D animation? I think so. I think the filmmakers would still get the surreal feeling that they were going for. And it might come off looking like the 1970s, the Yellow Submarine, or the Raggy Ann and Andy movie from that same time period. As for negatives, well, the acting. It's stiff and wooden, meaning the characters lack any personality or feeling. I don't know why professional voice actors weren't used for this film. Maybe for the same reason Hollywood still does this practice today. Even if you're going to hire celebrity voices, could you at least direct them better? If that doesn't work, then don't have those actors as the main leads. Also, another problem I had with this film was chopping editing. There was repeat footage used over and over again. There was awkward cuts and scenes that were really head scratching. Did the filmmakers run out of money or time for this film? That's the only thing I can think of why they kept reusing animation. And this is going to sound weird, but another negative I have is this film doesn't follow the original story or the ballet, which wouldn't be a problem except it's obvious that they didn't have enough story to make an entire film. Earlier, I gave credit to the filmmakers for trying something new, but if there isn't any substance for a complete story, then what's the point? A good part of the story just comes off as padding. It looks like the filmmakers only wanted to use the Nutcracker story as a framework and nothing else, but then realized that they didn't have any idea on how to fill the film's running time. It makes me wonder though, was this film made without a script? Because if that's the case, then it all makes sense. As I know it earlier several times, the Ragman appeared at the very beginning of the film, but then he disappears and is never seen again. It's things like this that makes this film so maddening. I mean, don't introduce a concept that appears to be important to the story only to not bring it up again. Another thing I really didn't like was the bad character models, design, and animation. There is a creepy feeling in the film, some of which I'm sure was intended, but at other times unintended. The blank thousand mile stares, the overly stiff movements, the fact that nearly everyone has the same expression all the time. While watching this, I asked myself a question. Why did this fail but the Rick and Bass shows and films succeed? I think the reason is for one, the Rick and Bass films have a sense of fun and wonder. Their stories are paced out well, shot well, also the design of their puppets are more expressive. The characters are still stiff, they are wood after all, but with their overly exuberant movements along with their felt or cotton or cloth that makes up their hair, mustaches and eyebrows, their movements have a feeling of humanity. That's it. That's the problem. This film and its characters and everything in it lacks humanity. So is this film recommendable? Oddly, yes. This is a terrible film. However, I do recommend it for only one type of person. The person that claims that there isn't any truly strange, weird, or bad holiday films need to see this film. I think it really says something that the studio that made this since then hasn't made another stop motion film. Oh yeah, that reminds me. Do you know what studio made this film? Sanrio. Their company puts out Hello Kitty. The mind boggles that a company that has that as their mascot made this. But maybe it shouldn't though. I did some check-in, I found out that some of their other films around this time, which were 2D animated, are a bit weird, but in a way completely different 
also from this film. In 1978, they came out with Ringing Bell, based off of the storybook by Takahashi Yanisei. Yeah, it looks like a cute story about a lamb. However, it's really about how bloodthirsty revenge can ruin your life. Another of their co-productions, most of their films are co-productions, is The Mouse and His Child, based on the Russell Hoban book. At first, you think it's just a simple heartwarming tale of a boy and his father going through a couple of whimsical misadventures. Bah! It's really about a life of death struggle about them after they fall in the trash, become slaves, be a psychic frog, and then battle the evil rat empire. Now, from what I can tell, since the mid 1980s, Sanrio has gone more of the safe route, which is a shame. I know there's more money in going the predict. I know there's more money in going the predictable safe route. I mean, look at Illumination Entertainment. But it would be nice if they push the envelope more, or at least give their films a bit more bite. But back to the film itself. While I wouldn't say the film is boring, I would say that during the silliness, it can go a bit too long. Something I did notice though, apparently there are two versions of the film. An A2 minute Japanese one, and a 73 minute one. I just saw the 73 minute one. I haven't been able to find the A3 minute one anywhere. So it might be possible that some of my issues with the film, see the lack of the Ragman for example, may have been resolved by the Japanese version, but then again, who knows. If you like this video, then please comment below, subscribe to the channel, and share the video. And if you have any suggestions on what other films I should review, also note below. And until next time, have a good day. Abracadabra, spawn the beer. Oops. Way down upon the swanee.